Hello from Southern Ontario, it's May 8th. So our Governor General, Mary Simon, was uh, yeah. facilitating a roundtable discussion regarding Bill C-63. That's the Online Harms Act. That's the one that got the rest of the world freaking out because it is, well, there's, it's unprecedented in the Western world to have anything remotely near this restriction on free speech, this Arm, Online Harms Act, Bill C-63 entails. You're probably not seeing much about it in Canada, Bill C-11 and 18. They don't want us seeing the world perspective. Quick overview, the Governor General stands above our government as the liaison to the British Crown, largely a ceremonial position, but not quite. The Governor General has the power to appoint senators and superior court judges, as well as the ability to grant or withhold royal assent to bills. Uh, the Governor General can also dissolve Parliament. But now we come to the point. The Governor General is supposed to be nonpartisan a safeguard against the abuse of power. So what's she doing having a roundtable discussion regarding Bill C-63, the Online Harms Act? To my way of thinking, she shouldn't even see that bill until it's passed its final stages of Parliament, Senate, Parliament again, and she looks at the bill to actually decide whether she's going to give it royal assent or not. There were some people also at that roundtable discussion that leaves you shaking your head um, who's the guy who wrote the bill? He was there. Um, who the author, the author, author, sorry, of the bill, the liberal federal justice minister, Arif Verane, if I'm pronouncing his name right. Yeah, he's the fellow who wrote this draconian, frightening thing. So, okay, we'd expect him to be there again. I don't think, well, nobody thinks the governor general should be. Let's take a look at two or three other people who are there who will leave you shaking your head as to what were they even doing there. Teresa Tam. You know her. Yeah, my sister's looking at me going, her? Yeah, Tam the man. Um, her primary employer is the WHO and she's Canada's chief health advisor. So what's she doing there discussing a bill like this? <laughs> who knows? Then we have someone, Faye Johnston, who, according to the Rebel News, is a government-funded transgender activist. And Rachel Gilmore, unemployed, far-left, woke-left, unemployed uh, former journalist, now a podcaster on TikTok. Once again, what's she doing sitting in on something like this? <laughs> Don't ask me. Then we have Neely Kaplan Mirth, who you may remember from 2020 through 2022, popping up on our news media all the time, promoting heavily all of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Censorship. Now, she is a family doctor, and she's also a, uh, an anthropologist. So depending on what field of anthropology she specializes in, I guess I could say, one might give her some credit for being there for the anthropology business. Meanwhile, the Rebel News is over in England trying to petition King Charles to remove Governor General Mary Simon for this, I mean... Talk about a blatant breach of partisanship. And again, Bill C-63 has the world all just stunned that Canada would consider such a bill. I mean, it takes us, well, to the level of North Korea just about. So what's our Governor General doing in there? And uh, my, what an eclectic crew gathered around that table, are they not?